as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord, I'd like to um, encourage you with all verses from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 19. And this is from the easy-to-read version. It says, Always be full of joy. Never stop praying. And whatever happens, always be thankful. This is how God wants you to live in Jesus Christ. Don't stop the work of the Holy Spirit. So church uh, rejoicing doesn't always mean uh, rejoicing always doesn't mean that we're dismissing yung mga difficulties that we're going through or pretending our circumstances are not real. Because joy and happiness are not the same thing. Um, happiness depends on the happening. Happiness depends on the happenings in our lives. But joy is being happy despite everything or whatever the circumstances are. So today as we worship, I pray that we will be filled with the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit have its fruit in us, one of which is joy. So let us have joy fill in our hearts as we worship today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for being with us every day. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will just fill us with joy. And today, God, we set aside everything that is burdening us or any any kind of um, worries that are in our hearts, Lord, take it away. And we just want to focus you on you, on who you are and what you've done in our lives. We celebrate you today. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, church. Let's let the joy of the Lord fill our hearts as we worship today. Says a yes and amen. Every one of them is true. I will trust and put my hope in you. All my life is found in you. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Makes me own. Let the joy of the Lord be in this house this morning. Fix my eyes upon your faithfulness. I walk by faith, faith and not by sight. Surely goodness that will follow me every moment of my I've life. I've got joy. I've got joy like a river. Joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul makes me. I've got joy, I've got joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul makes me whole. Light to the darkness, joy is where you are. You give hope to the hopeless, peace to the restless, strength to the weary heart. You bring freedom to captives, light to the darkness, joy is where you are. You give us joy. Hope to the hopeless, peace to the restless. To captives, light to the darkness, joy is where you are. I've got joy, I've got joy, I've got joy, I've got joy, I've got joy. 
soul. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul makes me own. One, two, one. I've got joy. Oh 
you, Lord, in this place. We receive all our highest praise, God. And hallelujah, God will live up once again. All creation lift this voice, declaring till the end, O oh Lord, how great. Holy, strong and mighty. 
question ngayon para sa ating 3, 2, 1. So, kilalanin naman po natin yung mga katabi natin, kung ano pong pangalan nila, taga saan po sila, and may bago tayong question for today, and that is, what is your favorite holiday and why? Yan. And kung kakilala nyo na po sila, tanungin nyo din sila about sa ating question, what is your favorite holiday and One minute po yan. you met someone new today, hindi natin alam, baka first-timer pala sila. Or if you, you've, you're sitting next to someone you already know, I hope that you learned something new about them. And because of that, um, we want to welcome you all here. So welcome everyone to Victory Puerto Princesa. Here we, uh, we have the heart to do two things, and that is to honor God and to make disciples. And syempre, making disciples means we help one another with our walk with God. We help one another to grow uh, sa ating discipleship journey. And isa sa mga ways that we can do that is through the upcoming um, the upcoming one-to-one -one training natin. Okay, so um, sino ba sa inyo dito yung mga Gen Z? Taas naman ang kamay dyan. Come on! <laughs> or millennials. Come on! <laughs> Um, or maybe you are from the Generation X. Yeah. <laughs> or from the Baby Boomers generation. So whatever generation you are from, you will definitely, um, you can definitely benefit from this training. This is the one-to-one -one training that is happening on Saturday na po. That's November 25. Ayan, November 25, Saturday. 4 p.m. po yan sa ating Victory Office dito sa Robinsons. 
Yeah, and so this, here we can learn how to do one-to-one -one with the next generation. Kasi syempre, may mga bagong mga terms na yan, mga Gen Z natin. So, yung mga G, come on. <laughs> so, kailangan. Um, so, it's good that we can learn how to connect with the next generation through these through the one-to-one -one training. So by the way pala, ang one-to-one -one is the first step sa ating discipleship journey. So para ma um, to learn more about that, you can also um, ask the people from the admin booth. And next, we have our, make, um, our empowering leaders class. Ayan, so uh, ang empowering leaders class natin is on November 26. Sa Sunday na po yan, next week at 4 p.m. So the Empowering Leaders class is part of our Empower, um, Empower in our Discipleship Journey. So it is designed for victory group leaders who have been through the Making Disciples class and we are now getting ready and who are now getting ready to help others become leaders. So we empower the disciples to make disciples and this three-hour class gives the key elements for leadership development. So again, that's on November 26, po. Um, that is next Sunday and it is at 4 p.m. So you can also scan the QR code if you want to join or sign up sa ating Empowering Leaders class. And kanina, we asked each other, what is your favorite holiday? Our favorite holiday ko talaga is Christmas. So since we're um, celebrating Christmas na, or we are uh, welcoming Christmas na, we will be doing so through our Love the City program or initiative. Come on, palakpakan naman natin si God for that. Okay, so sa Love the City, Okay, for the Love the City um, initiative, we will be giving to, um, this is on December 2, Saturday po ito, and we will be giving, um, we will be blessing the families in the communities or barangays of Bahile and Maharaskas. Ayan, so for more details about the Love the City, ayan, we can... Uh, Scan this QR code, and we are trying to raise, um, we believe in the Lord to raise 170, yeah, 170 um, na mga love bags para po ma-bless natin at ma-share natin ang gospel sa mga families in Barangay Bahile and Barangay Makaraskas. So for more details, wait lang ah, <laughs> hindi ko masyadong nababasa. <laughs> Ayan, so we are donating 170 bags containing, kasi baka hindi nyo masyadong makita sa screen, so basahin ko din for you guys. So we are donating 170 bags containing spaghetti noodles, Pinoy style spaghetti sauce, Eden cheese, condensed milk, um, creme densada, two cans of corned beef, or so you can... You can um, build your own love bags and then drop them off at the office. Or we also accept monetary donations that is 600 pesos per bag. And you can give through our tithes envelope. So put a check on other and writing Love the City. And to donate online, you can also visit the link below. Yeah. So again, gift giving po natin is on December 2 for the families of fishermen from Barangay Bahia. And speaking of giving, so we'll now move on to our giving. Let me just uh, read to you isang word, uh, verse na parang palagi na nating nababasa kapag giving. Pero um, as I was meditating on it, um, parang nagkaroon siya ng bagong uh, revelation sa akin. And I'd like to share that with you. That is from 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. Yan, lagi ninyo na rin narinig to. Pero, share ko lang sa iyo, excited ako. <laughs> so, one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So, um, ang bagong revelation para sa akin dito is yung word na cheerful giver. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng pagiging cheerful kapag nagbibigay tayo? So, um, a cheerful comes from the Greek word hilarious. 
Okay, so from the Greek word hilarious, which is the root word of the English word hilarious. So, kapag, um, di ba, pag may nagbigay, nag-joke sa'yo, parang, it's hilarious. So, ang response mo is, matatawa ka, di ba? Parang, ha, ha, So, kapag nagbibigay tayo, how do we give cheerfully or with a cheerful heart, with a joyful heart? It is a response kasi si Lord muna yung nagbigay sa atin cheerfully. And yung verses before nun, di ba, sabi, it's not reluctantly or begrudgingly. It's not under compulsion or obligation Kasi si Lord nung nagbigay siya sa atin first, hindi naman siya parang napipilita na, sige na nga, bigyan na lang kita. Masaya niyang binigay sa atin yon kasi masaya din siya na makita tayong masaya. So, in response, like hilarious, maging cheerful tayo pag nagbibigay tayo. With that, let's pray. Lord, thank you po for the encouragement today that we could give not under obligation or not under necessity or not because it's a requirement or anything, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We just want to respond to you in worship. And we pray, Lord, that these um, offerings that we give to you, Lord, um, will be used to further advance your kingdom. We are just so thankful, Lord, um, sa minigay niyo po sa amin first because you are the first cheerful giver, Lord. So today, we give with a smile in our hearts with hearts full of joy, Lord. Bless the wor- um, bless the our giving today, Lord. We are happy to give this to you as our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, God bless you all as you give and enjoy the rest of the service. Check, check. Alright. Isang masayang umaga sa ating lahat. Good morning. Happy New Year. Uh, early fireworks para magising tayong lahat. Welcome to Victory Church, Puerto Princesa. Actually, you've seen the bumper video. We're starting a new series entitled See you on Sunday. By the way, I'm Pastor Edward. You can also call me Jong Hilarius. <laughs> and I'm really so happy to see you all in our worship service today. So we're starting a new series. It's called... See you on Sunday, and uh, are, are you happy to be here today? No, ang ganda nung sinabi ni ba, no? I, I believe God is just pouring out a spirit of joy upon our midst today, and I pray that we will really feel that joy in our service and also for the rest of our week and the rest of our lives until Jesus Christ returns in all His glory. Pero bago dumating si Jesus Christ, marami pa siyang gagawin in and through our lives. So uh, one of the things that we'd like to do in order for us to know God's purpose is we do series, based on the Word of God, and today we'll be starting this new series about Ecclesia or about the church. So, see you on Sunday. Isang tanong, bakit nga ba tayo nag-meet every Sunday? Have you ever asked that question? Why why do we go to a church service on a Sunday? But hindi na lang Sabado, or hindi na lang Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, or sabi, thank God it's Friday. Why, why don't do it on a Friday? Have you ever asked that question? Why do we meet on a Sunday? Okay? And the reason why we meet on a Sunday, actually because in Acts 20, verse 7, um, I don't know if I have the slides there. Okay, in Acts 20, verse 7, mababasa natin, on the first day of the week, 
when we were gathered together, according to the book of Acts, when the early church was gathering, they were meeting every first day of the week. And we know that the first day of the week is Sunday. At bakit nga ba sila nagkikita-kita every Sunday or every first day of the week? The reason for that is because Sunday was the day Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. That's why Christians, especially the early church, the Jewish Christians, they meet on a Sunday, which is the day Jesus was resurrected, to remember and celebrate the life of Christ, the death of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ. So they were gathering on a Sunday because they were remembering the life, the teachings, everything that Jesus taught them, everything that Jesus imparted to them. They also remember the death of Jesus Christ. The reason for that is because of our sins. And they remember the resurrection, the victory that we have with Him. So that's why we meet on a Sunday. It's, it's in honor of the life, death, and resurrection to Jesus Christ. So that was the reason for the early church, for the New Testament church. And I just like to ask this question to all of us as we, you know, start this new series, See you on a Sunday. Ikaw ba? What is the reason why you're going here, why you're attending a church gathering? So I want you to complete this phrase, I go to a church gathering because, at ikwento mo sa katabi mo. Okay? So sa mga introvert dyan, busy-busyhan na tayo. Sa mga extrovert naman, buhay na buhay na. Come on, di ba? Kahit, kahit yung nasa likod ko, pastor, tatanungin ko. Di ba? Sa mga extrovert dyan, tatayo pa yan, pupunta pa sa harap. Okay, so can we just share to our seatmate your answer to that? I go to a church gathering because my crush is here. Ay! Oh, so kung wala na crush mo dito, no, hindi na ako attend. Or kapag binasted na niya ako, hindi na ako attend. Okay? So what's the reason why we attend this church gathering? Gathering of the people of God. Okay. At dahil ayaw nyo gawin, let's just go to the Word. <laughs> Pero let's just do that. No, it's a chance also to get to know the person beside you. Oh, bakit nga ba? Bakit nga ba tayo pupunta dito? Bakit tayo gumigising ng maaga? Bakit tayo nag effort mag-BS, mamasay, mag-commute, mag-drive, umaten dito? No, bakit nga ba? Okay? We could just stay at home and watch Miss Universe, right? But why are we here today? Uh, so let's answer that question. Why do we go to a church gathering? So okay na, okay na? Alright. Yung mga extrovert, di pa tapos for sure. Yung mga introvert, please, pastor, move on na. Please, next slide na. Okay. So hopefully, in this series, See You on Sunday, we'll be able to answer that question. Bakit nga ba tayo part ng church? And why do we attend a church gathering? Why do we gather? So we're, we're trying to answer that in this two-week series about the church. So today, we'll talk about, as a church, we're called to gather. And then next week, we'll talk about, we are called to keep gathering. <laughs> so we'll really put an emphasis on God's design for the church to gather. So our series description, God's design for His people is to come together and not give up in doing so. God calls us His church to do the mission together. Can you say the word together? Together, all right? Despite the challenges that we face. And our objective is to understand more deeply and be able to embrace the importance of embodied gathering. When you talk about embodied gathering, ito yun. On-site, face-to-face, physical gathering. So we'll get to understand why it is important to meet Hindi lang online, I know it has been our band-aid during the pandemic, but we have to see the importance and God's purpose for embodied gathering for the church. And it will help us to embrace the call to continuously gather and do God's mission together despite the challenges resulting in a miracle-filled life and ministry. So today, uh, our, our text, as we talk about the calling to gather, we'll see... God's design, and we'll see the life of the New Testament church in Acts chapter 2. And in reverence of God's word, can I invite you to stand right now as we read our text for today. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you to open it in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42. And this is the word of the Lord for His church. 
and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions, belongings, and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. That is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. God, bless the study and the preaching of your word. Lord, anoint the preaching of your word. Would you minister to your church? I pray, God, that we'll be able to see, God, the very design that you have for the church. Lord, that we are called to gather. We are called to do life together with one another. And we are called, Lord God, to do your purpose all together. So I pray, Lord, that the very purpose why we're hearing this message today, this very word that you have sent us, I pray that your word would not return to you void and empty, but it will accomplish the very purpose why you have sent it. So God, just bless your church today. Let there be joy and excitement in their hearts to study and hear your word together. Thank you, God, for this privilege in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may now take your seats. Okay, so welcome to Victory Puerto Princesa again. And this is our new series, See You on Sunday. And we're talking about the church. So thank you, RC, for preaching last week as you wrap up the series, What Shapes Us. RC already gave us a, a, a groundwork no, of what, what the church is all about. And uh, today we'll talk about church. And the first mention of the word church actually is in Matthew 16, verse 18. And the very first time the word church or in Greek ecclesia was mentioned, it was mentioned by our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so church is God's idea. Church is God's idea, and if it's God's idea, then we really get to know God's purpose and design for the church. So Matthew 16, 18, very first mention of the word church or ecclesia, Jesus was having a conversation with his disciples, and out of that conversation, he told his disciples, sabi niya, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades, gates of hell, shall not prevail against it. So that's the word church, is the Greek ecclesia. And the word ecclesia actually came from uh, two compound words, okay? The first word is ek, okay? And ek, it means out of. And the second word, okay, it means kaleo or to call. So literally, the meaning of ecclesia is to call out or called out once, and that's who we are as people of God. We have been called out from our past life. We have been called out from our sinful life. And God has already brought us from darkness into light. So the church or the ecclesia are people who have responded to God's call. And kaya tayo nandirito ngayon, di ba? Because we have responded to God's love. We have responded to God's offering of salvation into us. And habang tayo nagsama-sama, tayong mga binigay yung buhay kay Lord, when we gather all together, that's who we are. We are the church. So the church is the gathering of the disciples. People called out from darkness into light. So tignan mo yung katabi mo. Sabihin mo, wala ka na sa dilim. Nasa liwanag na tayo. No? Binago na ni Lord yung buhay natin. And when you talk about church called out once, God called us to follow Him. Okay? So we are now following Him. We're not following our, our, our own selves anymore or other people or following, you know, what we want to do in our lives, but we're actually following God now because He has called us and we have responded to that and our eyes now are fixed on Him. When you look at the technical definition of the word ecclesia, uh, this is from the uh, Bible study tools. So you pronounce this at ecclesia. No, ganun pala pagkakapronounce yan, no? And I love this definition, okay? Ecclesia is a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into some public place. It is an assembly. So when, when we gather as people of God, when God calls us to gather, we get out of our homes into a public place. You know, I'll talk more about that in detail next Sunday. So I hope you'll be here next Sunday. We'll talk about, yes, there's an online church. God bless our, our online service. 
It's uh, we thank God for technology. So we'll look at that next Sunday. Okay, online embodied gathering or on site. But when we look at the definition in God's design for ecclesia, citizens are called out from their homes, okay, to gather together in an assembly. So an assembly of people convened at a public place of the council for the purpose of deliberating. Okay, it's an assembly of the Israelites, any gathering of men assembled by chance. And in a Christian sense, it's assembly of Christians gathered for worship in a religious meeting. So those are the, the, some of the definitions, okay, uh, regarding ecclesia. Wayne Grudem, author of Systematic Theology, he defined the church as the community of all true believers of all time. R.C. mentioned about the universal church and the invisible church. The invisible church is the, the, uh, the body of all true believers. No? So the church is the community of all true believers. People who have gave their lives to Christ. People who have received salvation because of Jesus Christ. So as we go to our word today to fully understand the reason why we gather and also you know, God's design for us to, to gather together. Nagsasama-sama tayo. nag effort effort tayo. So let's look at what happened in Acts chapter 2. So Pentecost already happened. They were baptized, you know, with the Holy Spirit. They, the Holy Spirit indwelt them, you know, infilled them with the Holy Spirit. And now suddenly in their upper room, they were praying, they were speaking in tongues. They were filled with so much boldness and passion. And while they were just, just praying, speaking in tongues, right? there, there were a group of men who were, who were ridiculing them, who were saying, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. And because they were speaking in another language, and because of the boldness, no? that the Holy Spirit brings to the lives of the disciples. Imagine these disciples, nung na-crucify si Christ, they were running, they were scattered, takot na takot sila. But because of the empowering of the Holy Spirit, biglang atapang atao na. No, kahit may persecution, hindi atakbo. No, alaban sila. So Peter preached a very powerful message. And we can read that in Acts chapter 2, verse uh, verse 36, sabi ni, ni Peter after preaching, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Let me translate it in Tagalog. Sabi niya, kayo yung pumako dyan kay Jesus. Kayo yung pumatay dyan. <laughs> he, was, he was preaching so passionately no, with those people listening to them in that area. And uh, because this is not just the words of Peter, Rather, this is the words of the Holy Spirit through the disciples. When the people heard this, in verse 37, it says they were cut to the heart. Naranasan niyo na ba yun? When you heard, when you heard the message of God, you, may, may kurot sa puso mo? Naranasan niyo na ba yun? Yung parang may kurot sa puso mo that you can't do something about it and you just respond to the word of God. Have you ever felt that? My prayer today, we, the word of the Lord will always cut to our heart. Not that the Holy Spirit will minister to us. So because they were cut to the heart, they, they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then jumping to verse 41, So they responded to the message. And those who responded, those who received the word, they were baptized, and they were added that day, and there were 3,000 souls. Imagine in, in that preaching of Peter, 3,000 people got saved. And those 3,000 souls, ano nangyari sa kanila after being saved? What happened? They were added. Saan sila na-add? Okay. Were they added to a building? No. Were they added to an organization? No. They were added to an ecclesia. So after repenting and being baptized in response to the gospel, those who heard Peter's sermon were added to the church. Because the new life that we have in Christ is not just a personal experience. We don't do Christianity alone. Jesus intends for us to live our lives within a community that has a common loyalty to Him. I want us to remember, church, Jesus is very clear. He wants us to gather as his people, and he wants us to walk with one another. This was always God's design for the church. It's an assembling or gathering of his people. So why do we gather? What do we do when we gather together as a church? What's the reason behind that? The first reason, we gather because 
in gathering, we get to know and experience God together. Ulitin ko, we gather to know and experience God together. Acts 2.42, the Bible says they devoted themselves. Makita niyo yung title starting from verse 42 to 47 in your Bible. It's the fellowship of the believers. After being added to the ecclesia or to the church, ito yung ginagawa nila once they have been part of the church. Una, they devote themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. So the word devoted here is the Greek proskartereo. And if you define that word, it means persevering commitment. Kaya nga, di ba, kapag sinabi mong, I'm hopelessly devoted to you. I'm devoted to you. Kahit anong mangyari, kahit gano'ng kahirap, you're committed, right? That's devotion. That's being devoted. And the same with, you know, in our walk with God, Diba? We, we say, yung ginagawa natin, Bible study, pagpipray, spiritual disciplines, it's our devotion to God. Kasi kahit hindi mo feel, because you're committed to it, gagawin mo ito. Kahit, kahit gumising ka, parang tinatamad ka, gagawin mo pa rin kasi devoted ka, no committed ka dito. And you're persevering to do it. And when they were added to the church, they were perseveringly committed no, in meeting together. And what are they doing? They were uh, studying the Word of God. They were doing fellowship. And they were doing communion and prayer. So the disciples, both the old disciples and the newly uh, saved disciples, they devoted themselves to what really mattered most. It is knowing God through His Word and being in a community. Sticking to that verse in verse 42, diba? they devoted, perseveringly committed themselves, una, to the apostles' teaching. So we should, when we gather, there's a commitment, no? and we will persevere that we will gather to hear God's word together. That we will study God's word together. They devoted themselves to the, sabay sabay natin sabihin, apostles' teaching. The Word of God didn't say they devoted themselves to the apostles. Rather, they said they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So the church is devoted to the apostles' teachings, not to the apostles. And that's God's design for the church. The church should always be devoted to the Word of God, not to personalities. Sige mo yung katabi mo, narinig mo yan? Narinig natin lahat, no? Lakas ang boses ni pastor, eh. Diba? We are devoted to the Word of God, not to personalities. You know, I'm so proud of this church kasi, grabe, you're so much devoted to the Word of God. Pero marami kasi, in a church setting, laging nagtatanong yun, eh. Sino magpipreach ngayon? Anong service si ano? Saan siya magsispeak? Yeah. Eh, nagahabol ng person. Ay, hindi siya. O, oh, di na muna ka-attend. Mag-online na lang ako. Magsasearch na lang ako sa YouTube. Panoorin ko na lang si Ninong Rai. Okay. <laughs> or si Jeyo Ong. Diba? Or hindi ako atin ng victory group kung hindi si pastor yung magmimit sa akin. Hindi ako atin ng victory group kung hindi yung wife ni pastor yung magmimit sa akin. Kailangan sila. Kasi special ako. May pula ako sa noo. <laughs> yes, I understand. We're really attracted to you know, to, act, to, to excellence or even to, syempre kung doon dum, mo naiintindihan yung word eh, doon mo na nangunguya talaga yung word ni God eh. But when we're starting to debate, because there's a fine line to that, that it has become a personality rather than seeking for the word of God, then we have to be conscious to that. When we gather as God's people, we gather to know God's word deeply. And we do that through deeper study of His Word. In a context of a Bible study, di ba, mamaya, last part ng Making Disciples class natin. I, I, that's one of the um, most favorite classes that I have in our discipleship journey. Kasi tinuturo dyan, ini-equip talaga yung leaders natin, even the, the upcoming leaders, how really to do Bible study, how we do victory groups, how we are being equipped. No? E, ito yung context na eh. Lahat tayo, hindi tayo Bible expert naman, no? Lahat tayo nag-grow, sama-sama tayo, nagtutulungan tayo para, imagine mo, pag ikaw nag, nagsa-study lang mag-isa, pwede kang ano eh, pwedeng maging iba yung interpretation mo or ganyan. 
Pero pag tayo, we're doing that in the context of a community. That's why we always say we do theology together. Nagagard natin yung isa't isa. We sharpen one another just like iron sharpens iron. And sabay-sabay tayong nag-grow sa word ni God. Hindi lang tayo nakikinig spectator, kundi tayo natututo din how to rightfully divide the word of God. Because if God could reveal His word to this person, then God could reveal that also to me. Kaya nga di ba yung commentaries, kung nagbabasa ka ng commentary, nagbabasa ka ng devotional sa version, walang masama dun if it helps you with, the, with, with your growth with God. But if God revealed that word to that person na nagsulat nun, kasi interpretation na lang ngayon eh, then God can also reveal that to you. And how do we get to learn that? We get to learn how to do that in the context of a community. That's why we need each other. We need one another. When you look at Acts chapter 2, the early church, imagine nyo ah, yung spiritual di- disciplines, they just don't do it personally, they do it corporately. Napansin nyo ba? Tignan nyo yung Acts chapter 2, every, t- every spiritual discipline, ang context, corporate, sama-sama nilang ginagawa, yung pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Alam nyo kung paano biglang bumulusok yung personal devotion, yung, yung, uh, yung personal relationship. Malaking ba- factor dyan si, si Martin Luther and the Reformation. And that is very true because during the time naman ni Martin Luther, sila naman nai-hinder, wala silang access sa Bible, parang finifid lang sila ng gustong anong i-feed sa kanila. Kaya nagkaroon ng Reformation at tinuturo diba, ni, ni, ni Martin Luther, oh kayo mismo, you know, you can study the Word of God because that's God's Word. He reveals Himself personally to us. But when you look at the start of the church, yes, God speaks to us personally, but there's also God's design for us to gather corporately and grow together in the Word na sama-sama tayo. That's why it's very important for us to gather. So, balikan natin, Acts 2.42, ang inuna ni Dr. Luke in writing the, the, the book of Acts, Apostles' Teaching. Napaka-importante ng first mention no, sa Sa, sa time nung sinulat yung Bible. Kaya kapag inuna, ibig sabihin, yun yung mahalaga talaga. So continuing, dahil we're studying the Word of God, that's our, our really our common denominator. Nag-gather tayo, hindi lang to barkadahan. No? Hindi lang to barkadahan, hindi lang dahil you know, pare-pareho tayo ng brandang bags, no? pare-pareho tayong sekusan or heartstrings or whatever. You know, ang, ang dahilan pa tayo nag-meet, it's the Word of God. Amen? And then after the word of God, they devoted themselves to the fellowship. And now fellowship is doing life together. No? Doing life together. It means you are growing now in your relationship with Him. Una sa lahat, relationship natin kay God. We grow deeper in the word of God. And as we grow deeper in the word of God, yung kasama natin nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos, nag-grow din yung relationship natin sa kanila. Diba? Fellowship, so not breaking of bread. Breaking of bread is communion. Ano ba ginagawa pag communion? Di ba? Nagbe-break ng bread. So, inahati nila yung bread. So, nagulat sila. Paghati nila ng bread, may cheese sa loob. No? Enting cheese dessert pala gamit nila. No? You like that? Okay. Pero, pero di ba, hinahati and they're breaking bread together because that's what Jesus Christ did with His disciples. At ang ginagawa sa communion, we're remembering everything Jesus taught and everything you know, that Jesus has passed on to us. So, ganun tayo pag nagsasama-sama. Yun yung communion. Diba, you, we remember the life, the death, and the resurrection of Christ. And then, sabi dito, they devoted themselves also to prayers. So, by the way, pag-fellowship, ang pinag-uusapan talaga natin yung ginagawa ni Lord sa buhay natin. Yun yung context ng breaking of bread. No, Hindi lang tayo kumakain, but pinag-uusapan natin yung goodness ni God or ano yung implication ng life, ng death, ng resurrection ni Christ sa mga sitwasyon natin sa buhay. Okay? And then, prayers. Kaya ito ipapalag ko na. Alam nyo ba na every Thursday, sa office natin, 6pm, meron tayong prayer meeting. Kung may time kayo, sana maka-attend kayo, we will, we, we, we worship God together, we study the Word of God together, then we break out in groups and we pray together. So every Thursday yan. So if you can make time, we hope to see you every Thursday. So, as we gather, okay, this is the ritual, result. We mature, can you say Mature. Kung American, mature, okay? We mature as we know and experience God together and do life together. Yun yung nagiging result. We mature when we study the Word together because faith comes from hearing the Word of God. You know, lumalago yung spirituality natin. Di ba kung physical, nag, nag-gym ka, lumalaki muscle mo. Pag ikaw, you do the Word of God, you do spiritual disciplines, 
lumalago ka rin spiritually and that's God's goal for us to mature in our walk with Him. I want to say this church, Jesus wants a mature church, not an entertained church. He wants a mature church, not just an entertained church. <laughs> happy, happy tayo lagi. Diba? I, I need to feel good lagi. Yan ba kailangan? Lalo na, ito yung mahirap sa cinema eh. Ang spirit ng cinema, entertainment eh. May, may, may tendency yan na hanapin natin to be entertained when we come here. But I pray, and we always pray that in our prayer meetings, no? when we come here in the cinema, we are not being entertained, but we are maturing in our love, in our devotion, and in our obedience to the Lord. Amen? God's posture for us is always grace. Napaka-gracious ng Panginoon sa atin. Diba? Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Oo nga, ang gracious ni Lord sa katabi mo. Tignan mo rin yung sarili mo. Oo nga, mas gracious si Lord sa akin. But ang goal ni God sa buhay natin is maturity and it happens as we get to know Him personally and also corporately. The church is for growing people, not just for growing in attendance. So continue in Acts 2 verse 43. And O came upon every soul and many signs and wonders were being done through the apostles. So makikita natin as we know and experience God together, we will see miracles and breakthroughs happening in our midst. You know, what a very beautiful picture as we gather to get to know God, to grow deeply in Him, yung focus natin si God lang, yung, yung organic result niyan, miracles and breakthroughs happening in our midst. Kasi kapag nag-grow ka kay Lord, nag-grow yung faith mo, at pag meron kang faith, grabe, no? grabe yung nagagawa ni Lord because our faith is our ultimate connection to our unlimited God and we will see miracles and breakthroughs happening in our midst. If the New Testament church experienced that, all the more, we can experience that also. Because our God, Jesus Christ, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. May forever kay Jesus. Second point, we gather to renew our covenant with God and with one another. So we don't just gather to get to know and experience God, we gather also to renew our covenant with Him and our covenant with one another. Kung titignan mo, diba, this is one of my favorite illustrations. Pag tinignan mo yung cross, merong isang kahoy pataas, may isang kahoy pa horizontal, right? And the cross really re- reminds us, no? Of, una, pataas, vertical, our relationship with God. We gather together to be reminded of our covenant relationship with our God. No? Na kailangan natin mag-grow, kailangan natin mag-invest, kailangan natin in-nurture at i-prioritize yung relationship natin kay God. When we look at the horizontal line, we are reminded of our relationship with people, with the church, even with the world. No? That God really cause us to walk with them, to be a blessing to them, to be an extension of God's love and goodness to them. And as we gather with one another, no, nagmamature at nag-grow tayo, dahil alam nyo naman, iba-iba ugali natin. Pag nagsama-sama tayo, lalo na pag may kiskisan, doon talaga tayo nagiging mas Christ-like. When we look at our second point, we, we get to understand our faith is both personal and communal. Personal relationship with God, communal, your relationship with your community. Acts 2 verse 44, And all who believed were together and had all things in common. Imagine their, their value for their relationship with one another. They were together always. Have you ever felt that? We have relationships in this church community na sobrang excited ka makita at makasama sila. Have you ever felt that? Ah, oh, wala pa. Okay. Ako, ako lang ata yung excited pag Sunday. Excited pag may mamimit na taga-church. Diba kaya nga meron tayong tinatawag na victory babay. Narinig nyo na ba victory babay in our context? Alam niyo yung victory babay? Yung magpapaalam na kayo, uuwi na kayo, pero hindi kayo makauwi kasi gusto nyo pa makasama yung isa't isa. Diba para tong picture na to. Ayan. Ayan, victory, logo. Okay. <laughs> victory babay, diba? Uwi na. Diba? Ikaw, uwi na. Pero may humihila sa'yo victory babay. Meaning, you want to spend time with your fellow brothers and sisters in the faith. The church is also about growing in a relationship with one another. It's not just growing in a relationship with God, it's also growing in a relationship with one another. Lalo na, pag pumunta tayo sa langit, tayo-tayo rin naman magkakasama eh. Hindi naman pag pumunta ng langit, kayo lang ni Lord dun eh. Lord, tayong dalawa lang sa langit ah. Huwag natin isama yung iba. Oh, wag Lord ah, tayo lang. Hindi eh, di ba? forever, for eternity, makakasama natin yung isa't isa. Kaya ngayon palang practice na tayo. 
Iba yun ang sarap nun, no, na yung mga taong mahal mo sa buhay, taong gusto mong kasama, nakakasama mo sa langit. Kaya we invest and nurture our relationship with one another. In verse 4, they were together, and this is something that is amazing. They had all things in common. So what does it mean? I think we could say this in, 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 in this way. The church is also growing in their love and in their care with one another. Na kung sero, sino merong need, tutulungan talaga nila. No, that they don't just look at these resources as theirs. Rather, if there's anyone in need, we will help. Diba? In verse 45, they were selling their possessions, their belongings, distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. What we can see here is God's work in the lives of the church. Our basic human impulse, it's always about me. Diba? Ito yung usual tanong natin, basic human impulse. What's in it for me? Or it's all about me? Or what can God do for me? Huh? But when you grow and mature, we transition from what God can do for me to what can I do for God and for others. That's an end result when we gather. And actually, it's a miracle of God. Kanina, binabanggit ni Van yung iba't ibang generation. Since I'm part of the millennial generation, sabi ni Time Magazine, yung mga millennials daw, ito daw yung me, me generation. Puro me, me, ito yung... Uh, selfish, narcissistic generation. No? But I believe it's a basic human impulse that we always look after ourselves first and foremost. That's why it's a great miracle of God for us to genuinely love and care for one another and be generous to one another. Loving and caring for one another is a proof of the br- presence of God in our lives. Uh, in the book, Mirror to the Church, Resurrecting Faith After the Genocide in Rwanda, written by Emmanuel Katongle. He said, regarding the Christian's love and care for one another that is so peculiar to the world, sabi niya, we are called to be strange in the same way that the early Christian communities were strange to the world around them. The community in Antioch brought together Jews, Samaritans, Greeks, Romans, slaves and free, men and women, in a way that was so confusing that people didn't know what to call them. So they called them Christians. So the first mention of the word Christians happened in the church in Antioch. Okay? Pinangalanan nilang Christian kasi parang grabe naman to. Ang babait nila sa mga yun. Parang iba yung buhay ng mga yun. Parang there's something different in them that they were so good, not just to their fellow Jews, even to the Samaritans, to the outcasts. Ang bait nila, tinutulungan nila, even to the Greeks, even to the Romans. Walang discrimination sa kanila. Even whether it's a slave or free, no matter what economic standing, pare-pareho yung trato nila. Kakaiba tong mga tao na to. And one thing that they saw in the lives of those Christians their peculiar actions was to say that they were followers of an odd preacher from Galilee, which is Jesus Christ. And the world, according to Emmanuel Katongole, the world is longing for such new and odd communities in our time. And I pray the time is now and that the resurrection might begin in us. That the world will really see how Christians would love and care for one another and how we would love and care also for the world. Jesus mentioned that in John 13, verses 34 to 35, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. And how do we love one another? Just as how Jesus loved us. Eh, Jesus, di kami magkasundo, lagi kami nag-aaway niyan. Balik tayo sa sinabi ni Jesus, love one another just as I have loved you. That's how we ought to love one another. Continuing Acts 2 verse 46, and day by day, can you say day by day? Day by day, they were attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes. They received food with glad and generous heart. I want to highlight that word day by day. Alam ko title ng series natin, See You on Sunday. But being the church is not just on Sunday. Meeting with the church is not just on Sunday. We are the church from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. We are the church not just from Sunday, every Sunday, but we are the church from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the proof of our walk with Jesus is to live out, to be lived out not just on Sunday, but every day. Bukas, kamusta ka kaya bukas sa opisina mo? Kamusta ka kaya bukas sa mga tao makakasalamuha mo? Dito, andali eh. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. 
Yeah, the glory of God is upon me. Bukas kaya, nandun pa yung glory ni God. Pag yung mundo na yung kasama natin. The proof of our walk with Jesus Christ is lived out again, not just on Sunday, but every day. Church is not just an event we go to. Rather, the church is a family we belong to. It's a lifestyle. It's who we are. It's our identity. And the church is our family. Third and last point, why we gather. We gather to fulfill the Great Commission together. That's why we gather. We get to know and experience God. Second, we renew our covenant with God, with one another. We invest in a relationship with God. We nurture our relationship with God and nurture our relationship with one another. And after that, we fulfill the Great Commission together. When you look at the early church, they were not busy trying to win arguments. They were busy winning souls. And that's my exhortation also to everyone. Let's not be busy winning arguments. Rather, let's be busy winning souls for God. In Acts 2, 47, they were praising God. They were having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number. Imagine the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. The Lord didn't add to their number every Sunday. Rather, the Lord added to the number of people getting saved day by day. You know why people get saved day by day? People get saved day by day when we become the church every day. Magkaray niyo na. Natural na natural. Walang halong chemical. <laughs> people get saved day by day when we become the church every day. When you become light and salt in your workplace, in your campus, wherever you are, just eating in a restaurant or you know, just strolling around the mall or nagpapagupit ka lang sa suki mong barbero or bumibili ka sa suki mong tindahan, you know, people can get saved if we act like the church we are supposed to be to the world. I love this from Alan Crider. He said, in the first two centuries of the church, it was not Christian worship that attracted outsiders. It's not our liturgy. It's not the songs that we sing. It's not just the preaching of the word that attracted people to be part of the church. Actually, it was Christians who attracted them, according to the study by Alan Crider. It was Christians who attracted them and outsiders. Imagine, talking about the world, not part of the church. The outsiders found the Christians attractive because of their Christian habits, because of their formation. Jesus Christ is formed in our lives, which is the catechist and worship had formed. Meaning, anong ibig sabihin niyan? The best witness we have as the church is not just in our programs, but it is in our transformed lives. Imagine when people look at your life, they would say, anong meron sa taong to? Gusto ko rin yan. Diba? Anong meron sa marriage nung taong to? Gusto ko rin yan. Ay, grabe, yung mga, diba, ba't ganito yung parenting niya? Ganito yung anak niya? Diba? Parang, paano nila nagagawa yun? Diba? Gusto ko rin dun. They were attracted because they were living out the Christian faith every day of their lives. They, they wanted to pursue what God is doing through the lives of the Christians because they saw that firsthand. And that brought them. They got curious. They got excited. They got, you know, attracted to Christianity because they saw the transformed lives upon the lives of the Christians. That's why let us be good at not just doing church, but by being the church. Pwede tayo, ang galing natin, doing church, doing all the ministry stuff. We know all the right words to say. We know all the right things to do on a Sunday gathering service setting. But let us be good at being the church from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Because a church community can be filled. Pwede tayong puno dito sa cinema, puno tayo every Sunday, and still not be fruitful. God's goal is maturity. God's goal is fruitfulness for His people. That's why in Ephesians 4, 12 to 13, this is the work of the apostles. This is our work as, a pa as, as, a, as pastors to equip the saints for the work of ministry. It takes all of us, and it is for all of us, the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's why we can see here, the church is not just for spectating. Hindi lang tayo spectators na pumapalakpak sa mga nagsuserve. 
Oh, yung guwapo ng drummer natin, no? Guwapo. Basta police, guwapo, di ba? Hindi tayo gagano lang ang galing ng mga nagsaserve, di ba? Ang galing ng mga asher, di ba? Di ba si KV pag nagganyan ng braso, di ba? Wow, grabe. Parang model pag nagganyan na dito dada. Papalakpak tayo. We're not just here to spectate, to be spectators. But he, we're here to be sent. The church is not a consumer-based institution. The church is, and we will always be missional. We will fulfill the Great Commission together. We will evangelize. We will go out to the world. We will be a blessing to our communities. We will be a blessing most especially to our families who have not yet surrendered their lives to God. When we look at John 3, 16 to 17, this is my last verse as we close. God so loved the world. No? Makikita natin yung pagiging missional lang ating Panginoon. Dami kasi magsasabi, but mission na naman? Lagi na lang mission pinag-uusapan. Missional, missional. Hindi pa pwedeng ano muna? Ako muna pag-usapan natin. <laughs> you know the reason why we can be missional? You know the reason why we can be missional? Kasi we are so confident na hindi tayo papabayaan ni Lord. That's why we can, talk, we can think of the mission. Because we are so secure. Kailan ba tayo papabayaan ni God? At kailan ba tayo pinabayaan ni God? That's why we can think of the mission of God. And when we look at God, His heart is always for lost people. It's always for the world. He said, God so loved the world. That's why, because of His great love, He gave His only Son. Other translation would say, He sent His one and only Son. That whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17, God did not send Jesus, did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. That's the reason why we gather, because we want for many people to experience the love of God. We want as many people to be saved, because that is in the heart of our God. If it is important to God, it's also important to us. If God values the loss, we should also value the loss. That's why my last point, we gather to know and experience God. We gather to grow in Him, to mature in Him. And as we gather together as a people, we scatter for the world to know and experience God. Amen? Can we stand right now? Let me call again our music team as we end. I want us to worship God again. I want us to sing again the song, uh, We Your People, or This Is Your Church. And as we worship, I, I pray that the word that we have received today, it will sink in, in our spirit, in our soul, in our hearts, in our minds, that we are the people of God. Thank you, Lord, for, for the gift of church. Thank you, Lord, you don't want me to be alone, Lord God, in this world. Yes, you are with me, God, you are with me. But thank you, God, that you sent also people, Lord God, to walk with us, Lord God, to be with us, to journey with us. All together to grow in our love, in our devotion, in our knowledge, and in our experience of you, God. God, thank you for calling us out from our past life and calling us into a new life. And thank you, God, you did not just leave us alone there, but you made us part of a new family, a covenant family, which is the church. God, as we worship you today, Lord, we thank you, God, for what you have done in our lives. But as we worship you, we want to thank you also for this church. For our church, this church whom I belong to, my family, you know, God is calling us to be part of a family. There's no Lone Ranger Christians. Even God himself ex existed in a form of a relationship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're not meant to do life alone. You, you're not meant to do even ministry alone. So I pray today, God, that any hindrance from gathering or from being connected, I pray that your presence would remove that, God, in our midst today in this time of worship. And I pray, God, that your 
word, Lord God, would continue to cut into our hearts. And I pray that we will respond to your word, God. So thank you, God. We lift you up in our time today. We worship you, God, as a people. We gather here to worship you. God, we gather here to experience you. We gather here to encounter you. And we gather here to honor your most holy and precious name. So Jesus, take your place. Inhabit the praises of your people. In Jesus' name. This is your church, God builds it. This is your church, God builds it. Jesus, cornerstone, God builds thank you for just calling us out Lord God from our past life even from our even if you are here today there's still struggles in your life you're doing life on your own you still don't have a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ you know I want us to really take this opportunity you know if you are here today you want to respond that I don't want to do life alone anymore I believe there's a reason why I'm here today because God wants me to be in a relationship with Him. And if you're that person, just, just pray this very simple prayer. You can raise your hand and just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I, I respond to your call. Thank you for your invitation. I respond to that call. I give my life to you right now. I give my life to you. I'm not running away anymore. I will not push you away anymore. God, I give my life to you right now, God. I give my life to you. 
my past, my present, my future. Lord, I give my life to you right now. And thank you, God, that as I give my life to you in faith, I know you're beginning to transform my life. You're beginning to transform me from inside and out. And thank you, God, that you have called me into a family that I truly belong. And that is your church, your children, your people. And I can proudly say, this is my community. This is my church. Thank you, God, for loving me. And thank you, God, because I know you will bring people that will love me genuinely as well, just like how you have loved me. And thank you, God, that I can find that in this church. This is my church. This is my family whom you put me into. You know, if you're that person who prayed that prayer, you know, we'd like to meet you. You know, after the service, we'd like to connect with you. And get to know you more. You know, you can put down those hands. Lord, as we've talked about earlier, God, Lord, as a people, Lord, I pray for a persevering commitment to gathering, Lord God. Lord, that we will put premium, Lord God, into gathering as your people. Lord, if we are here today na parang dragging na sa amin yung pagpunta sa service, even dragging na sa amin yung pagpunta sa victory group, pagsoserve, Lord, dalangin ko, Lord, alisin yung dragging feeling na yan, God. Palitan nyo ng joy, Lord God. I believe the word earlier, yung, yung hilarious, God, yung, yung cheerful heart. Lord, I believe you're bringing back the cheerful heart, not just in the area of generosity, but even in the area of gathering. Lord, na merong excitement na, excited na ako mag-Sunday, hindi ako magpapalate, excited na ako makita yung friends ko, excited na ako makita yung mga ka, kasama ko in faith. Lord, let there be excitement, Lord God, upon your church, Lord, to gather. And not just to gather for the sake of gathering, but let there be excitement to gather and be excited for your word. Lord, whether it's in a Sunday service, it's in a victory group, Lord, we will go there dahil uhaw na uhaw na uhaw kami, God, sa inyong salita at sa inyong presensya. So I pray, Lord, that this church, Lord God, will grow deeply in our devotion, in our desire, and in our hunger, Lord God, for your word and for your presence. Lord, I also pray, God, for our relationship with you, God. I pray na, Lord, yung pagmamahal namin sa'yo, God, Lord, walang makakanakaw nun sa amin, God. Not offense, not any discouragements. Lord, yung relationship namin sa inyo, God, walang makakanakaw nun sa amin, God, because you are the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, we fix our eyes on you, God, right now. Lord, I pray for all of us who are here today, Lord, that we will have a blossoming, growing, and maturing relationship with you, God. I pray for all of us, God, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit that we will really grow in our love for you, in our devotion for you, God, in the name of Jesus. And I also pray, God, hindi, mo lang, hindi lang mag-grow yung relationship namin sa inyo, yung relationship din namin sa bawat isa, God. Lord, na yung, yung saya namin, God, na makasama, yung mga kapatid namin dito, na, na sobrang excited din kami na kapag nasa langit na, ako, same joy, same excitement, Lord, na kami-kami magkakasama nito. Kaya ngayon pa lang, eh, enjoyin na talaga namin yung relationship sa isa. Lord, we, we're desiring that for this church, that there's genuine love, there's genuine care, Lord God, in our midst today, God. I, I pray, Lord, that we will see that in our relationship because that's a proof of the work of God in our lives. There's genuine love, there's genuine care. And God, as we conclude, Lord God, this service, Lord, we send out your people. Let them be the church, not just today. Let them be the church tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Everywhere we go, we are the church. We will be the church. We will be Jesus to someone. Lord, we will be the church to the people that we meet. We will be a blessing to them. When they look at our lives, they will see Jesus Christ in us. Lord, I pray that that the glory of God will transcend and manifest, Lord God, into the lives of your people, that the world will be attracted to you, God, because we have been ambassadors of your love and ambassadors of your name. Lord, so as we conclude, Lord God, the service, Lord, we send out your people, and as you send us out, God, back to our 
families, to our workplace, to our campuses, to our communities. Daladala namin yung signs and wonders at breakthroughs ng Panginoon. Daladala namin yun, not just for the sake of experience, but for the sake of the glory of God. We bring that, God, as we get out of the cinema. So, Lord, bless your people as we send them out to their mission fields. Thank you so much for this very time. Thank you for what you have done in your church, Lord God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you need also prayers, you can come here in front. We are so happy to pray for you. Also, if you'd like to connect to a victory group, meron tayong Get Connected area sa labas. May mga ushers tayo at kapatid na nag-aantay dyan to engage you and to connect you to a victory group. God bless you all. See you again next Sunday. See you on Sunday.